My name is Seti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the four types of teams that you can create within Microsoft Teams, how they are different and some of my favorite features within each of these. So let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now, if you've been on Microsoft Teams before, then you'll know that we always start by creating a team. So let's go ahead and do that together. Now I'm going to click on create a team and I'm going to select the create team button. Now, the first thing you'll see is that four different types show up. Now, it's important that you understand these different types and that you also select the correct one. Now, the first type, this is the class type, has a couple of unique features to it. One of those being the assignments. So if you want to set assignments for your students and then mark their work, you will have to select the class type. Now, I've got more information about assignments linked in the card at the top, but you can always watch that video after this one. Now the second type is the professional learning community and this is where you're going to be working together with colleagues and do a lot of planning. Now this also has a number of unique features. Now the third is a staff tab again with its own feature sets and then the final one is other. Now this is great for after school clubs or maybe your local book club or any other club that you can think of. Maybe some study groups, some little work groups where you're working with a range of different people. Now let's go to the first one which is the class style and let's have a look at some of the unique features there. I'm going to click on class and I'm going to give it a description. So I'm going to call this demo class and we don't need to add a description but you can always add that description. I am not going to invite anyone to this team so I'm going to skip that and here we have our standard setup. Now because this is a class team you are immediately presented with the option to upload some class materials. So when I click on this right here I'm going to jump into that files tab that you can see at the top and I can start uploading my own materials. These can be files you already have in OneDrive or files that are currently still on your computer. So here you see we have that class materials folder and I can start uploading files into that folder. So when I click on new I can create a brand new file or I can create a folder. So let's go ahead and create a folder, demo files class. I'm going to create. And you can see this adds a second folder right there underneath that main folder. Now, every member of this team will have access to these files. So let's jump into that folder and let's upload a file. We're going to jump in and we're going to upload a file now. We're going to click upload and I'm going to upload a single file. Now I'm going to upload this Loom Recorder Guide for Beginners file and as soon as this is uploaded it is now available to all the other members of this team. Now remember we are in a class team so this is a great way of sharing files with your students or additional information about any topic that you've taught. Now here you can see this file is already uploaded and when I click on it I open up the file and I can now start a conversation about that file. So when I click on start conversation we can start talking about this file. So have you found any new tricks in this document? And we're going to send that. Now this is now linked to that file and so anyone who opens up this file can see that conversation and everyone can add their own information to it, their ideas, their questions or anything you can think of. Now here at the top you'll see that there are three more tabs and these are unique to the class type. Now the first one is our class notebook and this is using OneNote within Teams and it becomes a notebook shared for the entire class where you can do your brainstorming and share ideas and really get down to the content of what you're trying to teach. Now the first time you open this up you are going to have to set up your class notebook. So let's go ahead and do that together. We're going to click on set up notebook and we're going to select a blank notebook. Now here you get a quick overview of what your class notebook can do and also the different types of permissions. So you can see here that teachers can edit the content but students can also edit the content. So it's really a place for collaboration. You can see that teachers can edit the content and teachers can view the content when you're looking at the content library or the student notebooks. Well there again both can edit but they cannot edit each other's. Let's click on next and by default you get a number of different sections there. You can add your own sections but for this demonstration we're just going to leave it as it is and click create. It is now creating our class notebook and if you remember we have those different permissions while well, those different areas within the class notebook they are also being created right now. And here we go we are now inside our class workbook. So let's just open up the sidebar and then here you see those different spaces. If you remember we have the collaboration space where we can edit 
but also our students can edit as well. Then we have the content library where it's just the teacher editing and the students can view things. These are the different areas that were mentioned prior to this. But you can see there is also an overview here where it is organized in three different parts. The student notebooks, it's a private space they have, the content library and then the collaboration space. So the class notebook within Microsoft Teams is a very valuable tool, especially if you're going to be using this for online teaching. Then the second one is the assignments tab and this is where you can set assignments for your students and then finally we have the grades tab. Now in the grades tab you get an overview of all the different activities that you've set so the different assignments that you've already graded and then also how well your students have done. So this is the first type of teams that you can create. Great for classrooms, brilliant if you as teacher are going to be inviting your students to join your online class. Now let's go on to the second type and the second type is the PLC or Professional Learning Community. This is great for teaching teams or different teams that are working collaboratively to prepare their lessons. So let's go ahead and jump back to all teams and let's create a second type of team. So I'm going to click on create team and then I'm going to create this second type of team. We're going to call this a PLC demo team and there we go and then here at the bottom you can see this can be a private team or it can be public we're going to leave it as private because we are going to invite someone so what we're going to do now in the next tab is we're going to invite a demo teacher account so let's just quickly invite teacher one there we go and we're going to add this person to our team we're going to go to the next page we are now inside our team. Now I do want to give this a little icon to make it a bit more appealing. So we're going to click on this little pencil here and we're going to select one of these icons. Now because this is all about professional learning together, we're going to select this one here and update the icon. Now, as soon as you open up that teacher account, you'll see that the teacher has an invite waiting for them. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. We have our teacher account here. Let's jump into Teams. There we go. We're going to open up our Teams and you will see that they have a notification. Here we see this new team where they have now been added to that team and we can jump in and see everything that's happening within this team. Now let's go ahead and go back to the original account that was setting everything up and let's see what's specific to this one. You will see that there is no assignments tab and there is nothing at the top that sort of jumps out, but you still have that notebook. So here we have what's called a PLC notebook. Now we can click on that and this is the exact same principle. You have a shared OneNote notebook that you can now work in. You can use it for brainstorming and for planning your various lessons. You can also use it as a place to sort of store things that you found that may be of interest later on. This could be interesting articles or these could be websites that you found and you just want to make your colleagues aware of this. Now here you will see you do get this all preset up using a template. Now here when I click on this little arrow it is going to fold open you can see we have a number of pages already set up for us ready to get started. This will give you all the information about what your PLC group is like. So let's say that you have five grade four teachers and four grade five teachers where well, you might want to put them in their own PLCs and then they can use this as a place to really share resources and ideas and really plan together. Now let's say that they want to have a face-to-face -face meeting and they're all at home and they want to have that online meeting. Well, they can do that as well. So here from the general tab at the top, you can see there is that meet button and they can drop down and they can even schedule their meeting. Now, one feature I really like of this type of Teams is that you can add a planner. Now here at the top, you can see that we have this plus icon and this is going to be using Microsoft Tasks and then you can start adding your to-do list. So let's go ahead and click on plus and then we're going to select the planner. Now the planner is going to load and it's going to make everything super easy to then stay on top of things. So we're going to give it a tab name. Now I'm just going to call it tasks. I'm going to leave it as it is and I'm going to save this. Now you can also tick this box down here and then you will make sure that everyone is notified about you adding the planner. There we go, we can start adding our tasks. Now we have to do, so let's say that I have to um, finish the meeting minutes. And we're going to set a due date. Let's say that that has to be done in two days. Add that task. We're going to add a new bucket because all your to-do items are organized in different buckets. So let's call the second bucket working on it. And then let's add a third bucket that says done. 
Now, you can use these buckets and these different task cards sort of like a Kanban board, which means that you can move items around and you can just add them to the correct buckets depending on where in the stage you're at. So let's say that I'm also working on the meeting planning for next year. There we go, we're going to add that task. You can see I now have two task cards in two different buckets. Now let's say that I am working on the finishing of these meeting minutes. Well, I can click, drag and drop this into the second bucket. This is not just visible to myself. Let's jump into our teacher's account and you will see that they now have that same tab at the top. They also get a notification in their channel to say that I've added to this menu. So when they click on tasks, they will see those exact same tasks. Now, when they have been assigned different tasks, they will also get notified of this. They now also have the power to move items around. So let's say that this teacher adds a to-do planning next week and he adds that task. Well, I will be notified of that by seeing it appear right here in my own tasks. So in addition to the PLC notebook, this is a great little feature to use when you're trying to plan together. They also have shared files and other things. So that's the second type of Teams. Now the third type, that's where you have the wider community involved. So your admin staff and your technical staff and maybe other members of the school community that you can invite. Well, that's the staff style. Now the biggest difference is that staff members don't have permission to write everywhere. So as a staff leader, you can control exactly where they have writing permissions. So let's go ahead and have a look at that third type. We're going to go back to our teams and I'm going to create a third team. So let's go ahead, let's create that team and select staff. Now we're going to call this demo staff and we're going to leave it private, go to that next tab. And I'm also going to invite that teacher. So let's invite teacher one and add teacher one. And we're going to make sure that he is set as a member. Let's close this tab and let's jump into our team. Now here you can see we also have that staff notebook, very similar to the PLC notebook. So you can again collaborate and work together, share files, share ideas. We can set up our notebook right here. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to click on set up notebook, blank notebook, and you will see we get a little notice about the different permissions again. This is very similar to the class notebook where your members will have different permissions from your leaders. So here you can see the staff leader can edit the content, staff members can edit the content. However, the content library, only the leader can edit the content and the members can view the content. So let's go ahead and click on next. And here we have a number of different sections that are suggested to us by Microsoft Teams. Let's just leave it as the default and then click on create. This is now being created. So while this is being created, let's jump into our teacher's account and let's see what they see. There we go. We have our demo staff team. We're going to enter this and we can say, hello, everyone. Now this is the shared area. So everyone can post here and everyone will see that message. However, when I go into the staff notebook, I only have editing privileges within the collaboration space. If I were to go into the content library and then try to change some of the school's policies, that is not possible. And that is because I do not have editing privileges. This is great for even larger groups or big teams where you have a leader who needs to be in control of policies and some of the materials have to be set by that leader but you still want to have a space where you can collaborate with other members of that team. This could be an entire key stage or an entire phase of the school where you have, let's say your year one, two teachers all together, or your year three, four and five teachers, and then they have collaborative spaces. They can also share files because they do still have a file cabinet and in that file cabinet, they can upload their files. In addition to that, they also have access to that planner that we talked about earlier. So when they click on that plus icon, they can add a planner to their team. And then the other style, this is where you can have a combination of students and teachers and privileges can be changed. That is the other style. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to jump back into our main page, open up teams and create a fourth type. This time we're going to select other. Now let's say that this is a study group. So we're going to say demo study group and I'm going to invite a teacher as well as a student. So let's go ahead and open up the invite. We're going to invite teacher one, add him. 
And then we're also going to invite our students. So we're going to invite a student as well. And there we go, student will also be added. Now here you can double check and make sure that you set everyone to the correct privileges, member or owner, and then we can close this tab. We're now in our group and you will see that here at the top we have different tabs again. We have the files tab where we can share files with each other. We can start our conversation as usual down below. We can have a virtual video conference or a meeting. We can schedule meetings. And instead of a dedicated pre-formatted notebook, the only notebook we can add is the OneNote notebook. So in order to do that, we can click on this plus icon and then we can select the OneNote option right here. This is the standard way of linking a OneNote to your team and it won't have all those pre-formatted pages and different privileges set. You will have to do that manually. Now here, because we have both teachers and students in our team, we can give them different privileges. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We have our demo study group here. I'm going to click on these three dots and then we're going to click on manage team. Now here you can see that I am the owner and then here at the bottom we have members and guests. Now here we can change their role from member to owner or we can add additional members. Now I'm going to jump into the settings and here you can change the member and guest permissions. So I'm going to jump into the member permissions and then I can either tick these or untick them. So I can give my members very specific permissions and also do the same with guests. So here at the bottom, you can see I have the guest permissions. I can allow my guests to add channels or not. So guests can be invited from outside of your domain. Let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to invite a member and it's going to be a guest. So we're going to invite a guest from outside of the domain. And there we go. And it will then give you this little notification down the side as a guest. So that means that you can invite external partners. Maybe you can invite external training providers, or maybe it's someone from your local library or the local football club. So you can add those guests in as well. Let's go ahead and click on add and let's close this window. Here under the members, you will now see that we have three members and guests. We have two members and a guest. Now this is where you can keep check of who has access to your team and really what sort of privileges you want to give them. So to quickly summarize, there are four types of teams that you can create. The first is a class team. Great for that one teacher with the students and sharing assignments and grading their work. The second one is your PLC or professional learning community where you're working together with a couple of colleagues and you're planning together. The third is the staff, wider community, large groups, where there is a clear leader and then also members of that community. And then the final one is where you have a combination of local members as well as guests or students and teachers all mixing together with external people such as tutors or members of other clubs. Now, these four types of teams should allow you to get started really quickly, make sure that everyone has the right permissions and that you are utilizing teams to really get work done and save time. For even more tips and tricks on Microsoft Teams, I have an entire playlist right here that you can click on right now or watch one of the other videos. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.